So to talk about just a few more uh, finer points about Markdown, instead of uh, doing everything from scratch and walk, watching me make some errors along the way, we'll use a pre-written Markdown file. And I'll actually distribute this entire directory so you can try things out with this file as sort of a template. I have sort of a list of things I'm going to go through here. First of which is, again, we see headers in this file. There are quite a few of them, as this is a much longer file. And so a few things about that. RStudio sort of provides, provides this nice outline here, which we can actually toggle. But this will let us seek through the header information sort of rather quickly to get where we want to go to in a larger document. Also, when I knit this file, we see that the header information was automatically used to generate a table of contents. I did this by adding the table of contents to this header information here. Now, there's a number of options we can specify here, which is detailed in our Markdown documentation, but some of them there's no need to remember because we can use the settings button here and the output options. And for example, I simply included table of contents here. We could also do some things like, say, changing the overall theme of this document. I'll sort of pick one at random here. And we could also change the syntax highlighting. Again, I'll sort of pick one at random here. And we see that automatically modifies the header information here. And when I knit this document, we'll see the style, the style will change and we have a slightly different uh, syntax highlighting going on here. Let's see, I think I can scroll down and find a chunk in this document. Here we go, here's one. One thing you might notice is instead of the default uh, syntax for a chunk here, I have a little bit more. So if I start with R space and then some name, we can have named chunks. This isn't necessary, but for doing some more advanced R markdown, it's sometimes useful to be able to reference a previous chunk. So sometimes you'll see uh, our markdown documents with named chunks. Again, we can run this and we see the output is inline inside of this document. We also see that it is being put into the console, but we're not actually seeing this here. And it's populating our global environment here. I would note that Sometimes people don't like to see the output in line here, so we can actually modify how our markdown uh, outputs uh, using the settings again here. Maybe we want, uh, instead of in line, we want things to the console. Uh, R is going to want me to remove what's already there, and that's fine. So now when I run this, it's only running in the console, or I should say only outputting in the console, and we don't see it in line. That's just a personal preference that you can decide. I happen to sort of like the in line output. This is running R in a chunk. I think one thing we didn't talk about last time was inline R. So here we see we have some values stored in this variable called test sample here. And here I have an example of running R inline. So it'll run this function and then place the result of it inside of this exposition here. So if we look at where that is output in this document here, we see that it's outputting the result of this R command here. And that can sort of be rather useful when we're writing an analysis. And then again, if we change this here, so this was based on some random number generation. So let's say I change the seed here to be one and I read it my document, this will no longer be 4.7. It'll be a new number, which is, let's find it here, 2.6. So again, it can be sort of nice to write your exposition based on results of code that you ran. We briefly touched on chunk options before, a little bit more here. Uh, in particular, one that we didn't mention before, uh, I believe we talked about echo and messages and warnings, but we didn't talk about evaluation. So one thing that can be useful to do is to display code. So let's see if we can find this here, chunk options. So here's some code that's being displayed, but it's not run. So this is not evaluated. This can be useful if you want to display code that would throw an error, because uh, if code results in an error, the markdown document simply won't run. So you could display it, but not evaluate it, which is what we're doing here. And these are three lines that we sort of briefly touched on that you would not want to run, or at least we touched on the first here, which is this line wouldn't cause a problem. The document would still knit, but it just adds time to the knitting because you're installing this package every time you knit the document. These two commands, they're fine if we run them interactively and actually rather useful to run interactively. So if I run this line here with control enter, it pulls up some documentation, that's good. Uh, if I run this line here, uh, it pulls up the data viewer. Oh, nope, I ran into a common interactive mistake, which is that I'm running interactively and I did not run the data that imported, or sorry, the line that imported this data. So it's somewhere up above me in this document here. I could go and find just that line and run it, but the other thing I could do is simply click this button here and it'll run every chunk above this one. So I'll do that real fast. Okay, so now everything above this line was ran, so this, I believe, is now loaded uh, via, I think, a package, and now I can run this, and I obtain the data viewer, which, again, this is fine to do interactively, 
but these two lines would potentially cause problems when knitting the document. Because again, when we knit the document, essentially what happens is a brand new R session spawns outside of our studio and we run this document there. So that'll cause a problem here because best case scenario, it'll spawn a browser window with this information. Worst case scenario, something won't be set up right and it'll simply break. Same thing here. This view command is actually somewhat specific to opening this viewer window in our studio. So sort of best case scenario opens up the sort of old school data viewer in R or again, worst case scenario, something's not set up right and it'll simply break. So these are a number of lines that we would want to not evaluate when we're running a markdown document. If I return to the viewer window here, and I think go down a little bit, we see um, we can write LaTeX inside of our markdown documents. If you're not familiar, it's not necessarily something you need to know how to do, but we see here this LaTeX is a language for typesetting mathematics. We also see inside of an R markdown document, it sort of automatically generates the output here, and we can see what happens if we change things on the fly, I believe. Yeah, uh, that equation doesn't make sense, so I'll change it back. But uh, sort of nicely inside of R markdown, and our studio, this will automatically populate. So we sort of see uh, what we see is what we get sort of editor, which is rather nice. One thing about the result here is that when I'm knitting to HTML, this simply works. And this is displayed as what's called MathJax. So if you wanted to learn LaTeX, a nice thing is you can right click any math equation in a resulting document, click show math as tech command, and it will open up a window with the equation that we had seen written here and you could copy and paste that into an R markdown document to sort of get um, started learning some tech. And again it can be used in line sort of similar to how R was used in line. Here we actually see we're using both tech and R in line to generate a mathematical equation with a number that was being pulled from R. Another thing I would mention here is that to use tech and knit to HTML, you actually don't have to have LaTeX installed because it's simply using MathJax, which is JavaScript in your browser. Whereas if you would like to knit this to a PDF, you would indeed have to have tech installed ahead of time. Lastly, uh, again, this file will be provided to you or a file very similar to it. And it would be a good thing to just try it out, make sure you can knit it yourself, make some changes, uh, try to understand what they do to the resulting document, but we'll get plenty of practice with our markdown along the way. Mm -hmm.